What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. Quick life update before we get into today's video. I finished all of my research in Toronto, everything went very well and I had a fantastic time there. And now I'm in Greece for some holidays and also to see my family and friends before starting third year of medical school at King's College London. So if you guys are seeing my videos for the first time, my name is Nasser. I'm gonna be entering my third year of medical school at King's College London. And if you're interested in watching videos about medical school life in general, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel over here or follow me on Instagram at Karma Medic. And yeah, you guys can see what I'm up to over there. Okay, so today's video is gonna be talking about time management in the UCAT exam. And I honestly believe that time management is probably one of the most important things that's gonna help you guys improve your scores. And that's because there's no point in doing all of the questions very, very quickly and not being able to get them correct but there's also no point in only doing a couple of questions and taking your time and getting those right, but then leaving a bunch of questions at the end that you haven't been able to do. And so you need to do a lot of practice in order to find your own personal balance where you can do as many questions as possible, as quickly as you can, but also maintain how many questions you're getting correct. So as you'll know, in the UCAT, each question is worth the same number of marks, which is one mark. And so you wanna do as many questions as possible and also the easier questions so that you can maximize the number of questions you get right and maximize the number of marks that you get. Before we jump into the specific tips of this video, I wanna give a shout out to Medify, who's kindly partnering with me on this video. They're an online question bank for the UK exam, which I've used many times in my previous videos in order to look at questions, tackle them on camera, and talk about my thought process as I answer the questions. And you can check out their links in the description down below. Okay, so moving on to the first and probably what I think is the most important tip for the UCAT exam and time management, and that is being able to triage the more difficult questions. So what I mean by triage is that you look at a question, you assess that it's going to be difficult or it's going to take you a long period of time. You guess an answer for that question, you flag it, and then you move on and you continue with the rest of the section. And if you have time at the end of that section, you can come back to it and start thinking about how you would tackle that question. The reason this is so, so important is that, like I said, each question is worth the same number of marks. And so you want to skip the questions that are going to take you a minute to solve for that one mark and go on to the questions that are going to take you 10 seconds to solve to get that same one mark. You want to maximize the number of easy questions that you complete and leave the harder questions till the end because even if you spent a lot of time on them, either you've spent a lot of time on them, which isn't good to begin with, or you're gonna end up getting it wrong because it is more difficult. Now you can identify these types of questions in many different ways. And obviously in each section, there's gonna be different criteria for what constitutes a harder question. So let me go through each of the sections and tell you guys what I think or what I consider to be harder questions and how you should look for them and identify them. So in abstract reasoning, this will be a pattern that is taking you way too long to solve. Let's say you're looking at a set and you're trying to figure out what's the pattern, is it number, is it shape, is it color, whatever, and you're just not getting it. The pattern is not jumping out at you and you've passed your allocated time per question and you feel that you're taking too long, just guess, flag, and move on. You don't wanna waste a whole minute looking at that set, trying to figure out what the pattern is because you're wasting precious, precious seconds that you could be using on the next pattern, which might be super easy to identify. In verbal reasoning, this will be questions that don't have very strong keywords in the question stem. So for example, there's no names, there's no dates, there's no capitals or anything like that and that will make it harder for you to scan the passage for something relevant to that question. So those questions might be worth guessing, flagging, and moving on from, and also the questions where it asks you to individually assess four different statements. So in questions that say which of the following are true, and they have four different statements, you have to look at each one individually in order to figure out whether it's true or false, and those questions tend to take a lot of time. So if you find that those are wasting or sucking your time in the UCAT test, make sure that you triage them. In the quantitative reasoning section, I think this rule of triaging is more important than ever, in quantitative reasoning, as soon as you read the question, you need to be able to identify whether this is a one calculation question, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. You need to be able to intuitively guess, or I guess understand, whether the question that you're reading is gonna take you five calculations or just one. And if you know that it's gonna take you five calculations, then you know that it's gonna take you a lot of time. And so you're gonna to wanna to triage those questions. So for example, let's say I read a question that asks me to take the average. I know that, for example, I'm gonna to have to add up five different values, get the total and then divide by five. So that's gonna be at least four or five inputs into the calculator, which means I know that it's gonna take me time. However, since I know it's a calculation that is so simple, which is an average, I know that I'm basically guaranteed that mark. So it might be worth investing that time because I know that I can get the question correct for sure. However, let's say the question asks me to take an average, but one of the values that I need to add is something that I need to calculate. Well, then that adds in a whole other layer of complexity. First, I need to do this calculation to figure out one of the values for the average, then I need to add up all the values for the average and divide by five. 
So there you can see that there's a whole other step, there's more calculations to do. And so you need to intuitively be able to identify that just from reading the question and figuring out what you think is gonna take you too long or whether you can do within the allocated time for that question. The second thing you need to look at in the quantitative reasoning section is questions which you personally find difficult. For me, for example, when I was doing the UCAT exam, I just sucked at taxes and I sucked at time changing questions. So questions talking about flights moving from A to B. I don't know why, just for the life of me, I couldn't get them, I couldn't understand them, and they were taking me so long to solve compared to other questions. So when I saw those questions on my test, I immediately just flagged them, guessed, and moved on. But the point is, if you know your own weaknesses, you know things that are gonna take you longer than others, there's no point in wasting time trying to figure those out. Just guess, flag, and move on, and you can always come back to them later if you have spare time. Okay, so moving on to tip number two in order to improve your time management on the UCAT exam. What I say for this is you basically need to cut out all the unnecessary steps when taking your UCAT exam. And so let me give you guys a couple examples of that. So in quantitative reasoning, for example, any simple calculations, anything really basic, you're gonna wanna do those things in your head. Yes, you can do them with a calculator and then you'll know for sure if you got it right or wrong, but you're gonna save so much time by doing the simpler calculations in your head instead of typing them out or typing on the number pad or whatever. That's really gonna go a long way in saving you time in QR. The second thing that will save you time in quantitative reasoning is memorizing all the different equations that come up over and over and over again in quantitative reasoning. And I'm not gonna mention those equations in this video because I've talked about them countless times. If you want a list of them, go to my video on the 99% UCAT um, I'll leave a link to it somewhere up here and I'll leave links in the description down below as well. I have a list of all the equations that just come up over and over and over again in the QR section. So make sure that you memorize those. You don't wanna be in the exam wasting time trying to figure out what these equations are. You wanna have them already ready in your head so that you can just input the numbers that you need. And then continuing on with QR, the calculator. I'm gonna make an entire video on this because this is just so, so, so important. Learning how to use the calculator properly is gonna be a huge, huge, huge time saver. You wanna also learn how to use the memory function on the calculator. This is absolutely so, so, so important. If you are a student, taking the UCAT exam, you have to learn how to use the memory function on your calculator. So I'm gonna make a whole video about this. I'll leave a link in the description down below as well. So you guys can check that out after this video. In verbal reasoning, you need to become a master of skimming the passage. You know, you're gonna read your question and you're gonna identify the keywords that you're then gonna to go to the passage and search for. And then you have to skim, skim, skim. And the way that you can improve in this is by practicing skim reading, practicing reading things fast. But at the same time, you have to pick out the important information that exists in the passage. So it does take a little bit of practice and a bit of getting used to, but it's something that you can definitely accomplish. In abstract reasoning, by far the most important thing for me was having a list of all the patterns that I had ever found previously. And that way, when I was tackling a new question and I looked at the shapes or whatever, I could refer back in my mind to previous patterns that I've seen, previous patterns that I'd written down on a list, and I could figure out which of those patterns that I had seen before is most similar to what I'm looking at right in front of me. And that way, I always had a repertoire of patterns that I could refer to in order to figure out the questions that I was doing at that time. And I found that very, very useful. And my third tip for improving your time management on the UK exam is to know how many seconds you have allocated or how many seconds you have allowed in order to solve each question for each section. So I'm gonna throw up on the screen right now a table which I've taken from the website, themedicportal.com. This is an absolutely fantastic website. It's an amazing resource for all things medical school related. So this table that you guys can see on screen, it says that for the verbal reasoning section, there's 21 minutes allocated plus a minute of reading, which means you have roughly 28 seconds per item or 28 seconds per individual question. So when you're reading a verbal reasoning question, you have to start understanding, you have to start having an intuitive feeling for whether you're exceeding this 28 second allocated time or whether you're within that time so that you know how to pace yourself throughout the exam. For example, down here for abstract reasoning, it says 14 seconds per item which is really a short period of time and your mind is flying at like 100 miles per hour when you're trying to solve these abstract reasoning questions. And I remember when I was practicing for the abstract reasoning section, I simply for the life of me just couldn't meet this time constraint. And so I literally had my phone out and I had a timer and I would just click and then quickly try and solve the question within that 14 seconds. And if I exceeded the 14 seconds, I would turn off the timer and start again and just kept going, kept going and kept practicing so that I could intuitively know what 14 seconds looked like, what 14 seconds feels like when I'm trying to solve questions. And that way on the actual exam, I could tell if I was ever falling behind or if I was ever good and had plenty of time left. And that's what helped me pace myself throughout the exam and make sure that I completed all the questions within the time allocated. So yeah, having a good understanding or a good feeling of how many seconds you have per question in each of the sections is gonna be very, very useful. 
And that leads me to the final point that I want to make in this video, which is that everything that I just talked about previously and generally for the UCAN exam, none of this is achievable without enough practice. And I try to hit this home as often as I possibly can, but practice, practice, practice is the key to this exam. It is an exam that you can definitely improve on. It is an exam that you can get better with over time. You just have to study smart and you have to put in the time and the effort. The earlier you start doing timed mocks, the earlier you start doing timed sections, the better you're gonna be able to figure out your timing strategy throughout the exam and the better you're gonna be able to do. So I would highly recommend it as early as you can start getting this practice in. All right, and I think that's everything that I wanted to cover in today's video on time management for the UCAN exam. If you guys did enjoy this video, please do leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more medical school related content from me. Very shortly after this video, I'm gonna upload a video all about the UCAT calculator. So do check that one out as well. It's very important to save you time in the QR section. Anyways, that is it for me. I hope you guys found this video useful and I will see you in the next one. Peace.